Welcome to Comics with Dan. We're going to be reviewing Volume 1 of Saladin Ahmed's Daredevil. This review is going to have some spoilers in it, so please be sure if you don't want to see any spoilers to go back, read the volume, and then come back and watch the review. So I did pick up my copy from the library, uh, but I was excited to check this out. I was a really big fan of Chip Zdarsky's Daredevil, so this had a lot to live up to. Previously in Zdarsky's run, Matt was killed and had to go to hell and fight the Beast in order to save his friends. Uh obviously a very very clear uh, allegory to jesus dying and being resurrected uh when matt was brought back from the dead he had no previous memory of his past life and was brought back as a catholic priest my main issue with this approach is that i don't know how you're able to reconcile uh being a catholic priest and still going out and being a vigilante superhero it doesn't really add up together and I, I think Ahmed does a really good job of portraying Matt as a compassionate, a good Catholic priest uh, taking care of the children at St. Nick's. But he does struggle with uh, going out and fighting crime. And, I, and it's not to say that Catholics or Catholic priests don't struggle with temptation, uh, but it's not essentially being presented as something that he shouldn't be doing, right? He, he very frequently goes, you know, uh, God forgive me for wanting this. God forgive me for liking this violence. And it, it feels hollow. It doesn't feel like he's genuinely sorry. It feels like he's trying to play up that Catholic guilt as outsiders understand Catholic guilt. Uh, Catholic guilt is not something that should be hollow. It's not something that, um, that you should take and say, well, Catholics say they're sorry or that they feel bad about things, but don't. It's genuinely a really strong desire to do what God wants us to do. And that doesn't feel like Matt's doing that here. Overall, the story is really good. Um, I, I enjoy the dialogue and the interaction with all these other characters. By the end of this arc, it's revealed that Matt is fighting against the seven deadly sins, which as a Shazam fan, uh, I really enjoy the idea of him fighting against the seven deadly sins. Uh, initially, Elektra is uh, possessed by Sloth, and Ben Uric is possessed by Envy, and then She-Hulk is possessed by Gluttony. So uh, I'm really interested to see who the remaining four sins uh, possess and how Matt fights them off. One small critique that I have, and I realize that this is fiction, so not everything's going to be exactly realistic, is the portrayal of what exorcisms look like. And a, a real exorcism in today's world takes longer than a few moments as it does in the book. Uh, additionally, the exorcism that Matt performs on Electra is simply saying an act of contrition while holding a rosary. There's a whole set of prayers and rites that a priest has to do, not to mention the fact that generally a priest has to be appointed as an exorcist in order to perform exorcisms that um, make this not the most realistic uh, interpretation of what an exorcism looks like. That being said, I do enjoy the fact that it is a positive portrayal of Catholicism and uh, essentially Matt is using his Catholicism for good. I do like that. Aaron Cooter starts out this run on art and uh, it's it's very good. There's lots of good panels, good, uh, good lines. Uh, I, I appreciate his work. It does get a little derailed whenever he's not there for issues four and five. It's not that those artists are bad. I just prefer to have an artist complete an entire arc before starting to fall off the book. Overall, I think it's an admirable and good follow-up to Zdarsky's run, which I held in extremely high regard. I'll probably continue to follow this one through. Make sure you like the video, make sure you subscribe, check out these other videos, and thanks for watching.